Jeff! Not now, Marty. I I it's urgent, Jeff. It's vital. I don't care. Don't care about what, Jeff? Jeff, I've just come from the graveyard. They're after me. They want me. Want you? It's unnatural. What's unnatural about it, Jeff? They're body snatching. Body snatching. Mm, very good you are, too. Mm -hmm. Jeff, they've knocked over my headstone. Well, just a pair of ordinary grave diggers. You don't believe that, do you, Jeff? Why not? At this time of night. Sure. Look, are you going to stop them or not? What are you thinking about? There's my mortal remains being raked over by a pair of ghouls. More likely employees of the local borough council. That's not good enough, Jeff. Will you or won't you? What? Stop them! Yeah, all right, then. What was that? I'll have a look round, Jeff. Thanks, Marty. Why did you leave me there alone? Well, what could I have done? Well, at least you would have seen what they looked like. You could say that, Jeff. But I wasn't hit on the head. Oh, you think I imagined it? Well, um... Look, Marty, you called me out last night with some story about body snatchers. And I've apologised twice. I was overexcited. Overexcited? Well, it's difficult to explain, but... It was my grave. Near your grave. There were two people digging there. You must have been right the first time, Jeff. First time? Yes, there were just two ordinary grave diggers. You couldn't have seen what you saw. Marty, I know what I saw. Jeff, it was all my fault. You shouldn't have listened to me in the first place. There were just two ordinary grave diggers. Ordinary grave diggers do not lay out people who ask at their business. You could have slipped. What about the clothes he was wearing? All right, Marty. Let's go. Where are we going? We'll buy the flowers on the way. It's all as it should be, Jeff. They've left it very tidy. Doesn't prove a thing. Oh, come on, Jeff. Forget it. It doesn't matter. I'm not satisfied. Well, I'm going to check it at the gate. All right, then. Please yourself. Um, thanks for the flowers. Jeff! What are you doing here? Hello, Jeannie. Well, I've just left some flowers. Oh, that's nice. You still think a lot about Marty, too, don't you? He's not an easy man to forget.
Well, what are you going to do now? Well, I've got to make a call at the gatehouse. I'll tell you about it on the way. Oh, I don't understand why it has to be so gloomy. Forget it, Jeff. It's not worth it. Hey, this takes me back. Whatever you do, get one that fits. Madam, sir, Leonard Dighton, at your service. Uh, Mr. Dighton, we were wondering if you could help us. May I express my regret at the necessity? Uh, no, no, it's not in connection with a bereavement. But no. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah, that is, it's an old client, Mr. Martin Hopkirk. 9074. Yeah, if you say so. Uh, I believe there's some work going on near his grave. Near 9074? No, no, no. We're full up in that area. But I saw two people digging there last night, about half past one, two o'clock. And what were you doing there at such an hour, Mr... Randall. This is Mrs. Hopkirk. Oh. You still haven't answered my question. Yeah, I, I couldn't sleep. I took a walk. But what brought you here, Jeff? Marty brought me. Marty? I, I was thinking about him, business worries, and I found myself driving in this direction. I do assure you, Mrs. Hopkirk, you have no cause for concern. Look, I didn't imagine it. I got this for my pains, from a man in a three-cornered hat and knee breeches. Jeff, you didn't mention him. Well, with the dodgy looks I've been getting from people, I thought I'd better not. Could I have a word with you, Mrs. Uh, Hopkirk? About Nino's, uh, about Mr. Hopkirk. Sure, why not? Uh, uh, please. I'm easy. Don't take all day about it. Mr. Randall seems a little overwrought. But he's usually very level-headed. Yes, but ghosts. Level-headed people tend not to see ghosts. Who clobbered me? He was standing in the doorway. Well, there's nobody here. He must have ducked down behind a headstone. He can't be far away. I I'd better go after him. It could be that blow on the head. Marty! Marty! Where are you when I really need you? Watch it, Jeff. Don't knock me about. I've seen him. Seen who? The fellow with the clothes, the one who belted me. Oh, no. You're not still going on about that, are you? Name's Randall. The woman's the widow of an old friend. 9074. He's persistent. Yes, isn't he? You were right about him coming here. Naturally. This further glimpse of you, coupled with my advice to Mrs. Hopkirk, might just do the trick. This is no way to show respect for the dead, young man. He's not complaining. He may not be, but I am. You a friend of the family? Well, in a manner of speaking. I say that's a nasty gash. You'd better come along with me. I'll patch you up. <coughs> Thanks. Where are we going? We are ever so humble. What do you call it? Mandrake Hall. And uh, this house? been in a Mandrake family for over 300 years. There we are. I think that should do it. Thanks. It must be quite something to know you're descended from all this. Oh, but I wasn't. Oh, no, Mr. Randall. I'm not even a genuine Mandrake. I changed my name by deed poll. 
from wattle spoon. <laughs> Quite an improvement, don't you think? Well, sure. But uh, what about the ancestral home? I bought it. Everything. Lock, stock and barrel. House, gardens, ancestors on the walls. Everything. Right down to the lavender-scented packets of old love letters tied up in blue ribbon. You mean you're a... Exactly, Mr. Randall. I'm a fake. An old phony. It doesn't seem to worry you. Would it you? Yeah, I see what you mean. I made my money out of cattle food. The Wattle Spoon Cow Cake Company. <laughs> and in a hundred years, all will be forgotten. Well, you make no bones about it. Why should I? I'm in an exalted tradition, Mr. Randall. You keep a large staff? No, only Martha, my housekeeper. She's an extraordinarily capable woman. <laughs> Preservers from capable women. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Martha, just take these things away, will you? Martha? Yes, sir. Is Harry up yet? Yes, sir. I took him his breakfast a few minutes ago. Harry's my son. No. Oh. Breakfast? Uh, is he ill? Permanently. Oh, I am sorry. Harry suffers from, amongst other things, acrophobia, a fear of open spaces, you know. Also, he abhors earning a living. Would you like to meet him? down here from choice. Mm -hmm. I never lease the room. He has everything he needs down here. How's that grab you, man? Harry. Harry, this is Mr. Randall. What's with you? You trouble with the fuzz, man? Uh, no. In fact, some of my best friends are policemen. Catchy action, man. If you don't mind, I dig Rembrandt. Oh, come on. Uh, Rembrandt's a drag man. This is the new age, the age of freedom and action and violence! Violence. Come along, Mr. Randall. You'll find the rest of the house much more peaceful. Oh, slow, man. Draggy. It's that sort of pad. This is where it's all happening. <laughs> like I said, action, man. Action. <laughs> yeah. I believe two men passed this way, one with a plaster over his eye. Did you see them? Oh, yes, miss. He was with Mr. Mandrake. The owner? That's right. They're still up there. Oh, thanks a lot. Sorry to disturb you. Not at all, miss. Well, uh, thanks for showing me round and for this. Not at all. Have a drink. Well, well I should be going. Oh, no, I do have one. I, I want to talk to you. OK. A whiskey. Will you? Uh, Walter will be fine. Now, uh, this uh, detective agency of yours, does it pay well? <laughs> Not by your standards. <laughs> now, how does a hundred pounds a week appeal to you? Regularly. Well, that, a desert island with Miss Wildelong, has been one of my most cherished ambitions. <laughs> Cheers. Now, uh, you've met Harry. What do you think he needs, huh? To shape him into a suitable son and heir? I don't know. I don't seem to be able to get through to him. You've tried, of course. Of course. I mean, what more could a son want than all this? Well, from what I've seen of Harry, he seems to be anti-establishment. He sees himself as an artist. <laughs> an artist, I ask you. Th throwing paint at a wallboard. Well, it's a school of thought. It's hardly a suitable background for the refounding of the Mandrake dynasty. Well, I suppose you could say the same thing about cattle food. 
I don't seem to be reaching you, Randall. I'm listening. You seem to be taking Harry's side. Well, let's just say I can see both sides of the fence. Good. Then my offer was very astute. The job, you mean? Exactly. Oh, you're a young man. You can, you can talk to him, make him see my point of view, communicate with him. For a hundred a week? Exactly. What about his acrophobia? Well, like its opposite, claustrophobia, it's purely a state of mind. I'd call it an illness. Call it what you like. Will you take the job? You're not serious. Of course I am. Look, if a free apartment, a fat salary, and I'll throw in a car. Well, it's very tempting, Mr. Mandrake. But no. I've got a business, for better or worse, and responsibilities. Yeah, it seems you have visitors. I won't keep you. Life is very strange, Mr. Randall. I seem to have the ancestors, but not the heirs. Excuse me, sir. There's a Mrs. Hopkirk to see you. Jeannie. Oh, Jeff, at last I found you. What have you done to your head? Oh, uh, Mr. Mandrake has played Good Samaritan. Uh, my partner, Mrs. Hopkirk. How do you do? Jeannie, how did you find me? Well, uh, first I got a lead from the cemetery. And then one from the gardener there. It's him, Jeannie. Oh, not again, Jeff. That's the gardener. That's Harper. Who did you think it was? I must have been mistaken. This will do fine, Jeannie. Wait for me, eh? Jeff, wait a minute. You... you did see something, or you thought you did? Yeah. Um, I'll see you later. Jeff, please see a doctor. That bump on your head is... Oh, if only Marty were here to persuade you. Marty? A perfect ball that gave Bernie's chance, and he took it. Chock it? Chock it? Of course he took it. He was a mile offside. The referee's his brother, is he? Oh, and uh, that's the whistle. Yes, yes, the referee's blown time. He should be blown up. For the highlights of the game. And now we return you to the studio. Oh, well, still got a chance in the second leg. They're strong away. Yes, they are, aren't they? They always play better away, and it's only one goal. Yeah? Can I help you? Yeah. You can help me, all right. What's it all about? What's what all about, sir? I want to know what's going on. I wouldn't mind knowing either. It was a shambles, Jeff. They were robbed. Those clothes you were wearing. Clothes? That hat, those breeches. Oh, come on, Jeff. You're not still going on about that, are you? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Come on, Jeff, let's go. been all this time? The International Cup match. How do you get a ticket? I wrote in. What was the score? We lost 1-0. I think I'll nip over to Germany and see the replay. Oh, typical, typical. You get me into all this trouble, then you nip off and watch football. Well, I'm sorry, Jeff, but I didn't know you were going to start seeing things. Marty, I was not seeing things. That gardener was in full 18th century rig. Now, listen, Jeff, don't get offended, but I think you should see a doctor. Yeah, you too. Jeannie's been at you as well, has she? Yeah. Well, you want to listen to her, Jeff? She's always right. She's had me in bed with a hot water bottle, even before I've known I've been ill. She'll go on and on. Marty! She won't get me seeing a doctor. Two uh, separate blows, you say? That's right, Doctor. 
within a matter of hours. Rough company. <laughs> well, let's have a look at these. Not too much there. This one. Yes, a little more there. It's quite superficial, I would have thought. Good. So I'm all right. Let him decide, Jeff. I never said that, Mr. Randall. You see, you've got to face facts no matter how unpleasant they may be. Oh, but crying out loud. That's done it. I'm sorry, Doctor, that wasn't aimed at you. It just came out. <clears throat> Mr. Randall, would you say that you're uh, subject to these violent outbursts? Violent outbursts? Of course not. Jeff, watch it. You're behaving like an idiot. An idiot? Uh, have a cigarette, Jeff. Jeannie, don't humor me. I'm sorry, thank you. So, I'm all right, Doctor. Good. Jeff, you didn't tell him about the visions. Jeff, you've forgotten to ask the doctor if those bumps could affect your sight. The trouble with your sight, Mr. Randall? No. Oh, Jeff, please. Perhaps you should tell me, Mr. Randall. All right. Could these bumps make me see things? Oh, what, what sort of things, Mr. Randall? Well, like an 18th century figure in a three-cornered hat and knee breeches. Oh, no. Uh, dear me, no. That's what I thought. Oh, uh, wait. I mean, are you seeing things, Mr. Randall? No. Yeah, I mean, yes. Only things that are there. <laughs> like uh, an 18th century... May I have a word with you alone, Mrs. Hopkirk? If you've got anything to say, Doctor, say it. Oh, Jeff. You're heading for trouble, Jeff. He thinks you're violent. Wait here for a moment, Mr. Randall. I'll just get my nurse to redress those head wounds and then we'll have a quiet little chat about it all. Will you be all right, alone with him? Of course you'll be all right. Jeff? I don't like the look of him. Well, what's he up to? Leave it to me. What's he up to? Don't be so suspicious. I've never seen you like this before. Well, I've never been held up as a psychopathic personality before. Look, the doctor has gone to get a nurse. It's as simple as that. Oh, no, it isn't, Jeff. He's on the phone now. Send me two strong men, an ambulance, and one of those funny jackets. What? I'm off! <laughs> Get an ambulance, Jeannie. Well, how can you possibly know that, Jeff? My dear Mrs. Hopkirk, what a frightful experience. He has gone. Violent. Rambling. Hallucinated. A dangerous man. I must inform the police immediately. isn't it? Save me from my friends. What have your friends got to do with it? You and Jeannie between you, you've got the law after me. There's only one thing for it. I'll have to lie low. I can't move far from here without being caught by the police. So? So, I'll have to take the mandrake job. I can't tell you how delighted I am, Mr. Randall. It's strictly temporary. You might even grow to love it. Oh, shall I tell him or you? Oh, I think you should. It'll come as more of a shock. You can say that again. It's just not my scene, man. So you don't see yourself as a son and heir? So when's tomorrow? So why stay? I need these four walls, man. And the roof. Tight. Close. You know what I mean? Be a good son and heir. Be a man, Drake. Yeah, I see what you mean. You're really between the river and the uh, ultramarine. 
What do you really want to do, Harry? Like when? Like now. Like I said, no plans. When's tomorrow? Look, if you want to paint, tell your father. Waste of time, man. Here's all the plans, it's all mapped out. Waste of time! Thank you, Martha. Anything more, sir? Uh, no, thank you. You can find your own way to your room. Uh, yes, I think so. Good. Well, then I'll say good night, sir. Good night, Martha. you were up to something. I'm surprised you can spare the time. Did you break that window? Look, Marty, I'm not imagining things. I saw that gardener again, hanging around. He's up to something. What are you doing, Jeff? Wait and see. OK, what about that? Your funny gardener. Right, our friend Harper. Now do you believe me? It's a long way down. What's it all about, Jeff? I don't know, but I am to find out. Coming. There's not room in there for two, is there? Plenty. <laughs> what is it, Jeff? It looks like some kind of old drain or culvert, I guess. Which way do we go? Well, uh, you go that way. I'll go that way. What, on my own? Well, at least you don't have to walk the whole length, do you? No, I suppose not. I'll see you. Jack. Yeah? Never mind. Out. Let me see. Where we first saw those ordinary grave diggers? Yes, but... Aha! Uh -huh. So now we know what it's all about. Do we? Yeah. This is the only way they could get at Mandrake's son and heir. I can't move, man. I can't move. What's the matter with him? 
It's being outside his agoraphobia. What? Give me your coat. Give me your coat. Abducted? Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, what do we do now? You wait for the ransom note. One ransom note for delivery. Well, I can't take it. You can't? Why not? Well, they know me. I might be seen. At this time in the morning? Oh, for... Come on, now. All you have to do is put it through the letterbox. No. No, it wouldn't be a good idea. Really, it wouldn't. My card. Uh, Dighton's funeral parlor. Always at your service. Good morning. money for Harry. You would. They know you need him. The whole thing's been very carefully set up, right down to the phony 18th century costumes they use to scare off anyone who catches them with their preparations. Like you? Like me. Did you deliver the ransom note? Everything went perfectly. Oh, good, good. Perfectly. Martha, make some coffee, will you? You've got some thinking to do.
to earn yourself a shilling. Now, you take this envelope and you put it through the door of the big house. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right, then. There you go. Uh. Um. Do we just wait, or, or can we do something? It depends how far away they're keeping it. Well, so far, so good, gentlemen. We've still got to get you clear, Harry. Your father will turn the whole area upside down for his son and heir. Crazy. How do you get me out? We've designed something special for you. Hmm? Small but well-furnished quarters. Crazy, man. Crazy. All right, Mr. Randall. I'll give you 12 hours. Then you'll go to the police. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can find him? Well, I do have some pretty unusual resources and certain limitations. You mean the police are after me as well? Exactly. You can forget about that, Jeff. I've managed to persuade Dr. Chalmon that your condition is uh, temporary. And you calculated that I'd be here? Oh, it seemed an even money bet. I'm very sorry about your son, Mr. Mandrake. Oh, so am I, my dear, though I'm not worried about his health or safety. After all, the whole experience <laughs> probably doing the world of good. <laughs> It'll be kill or cure for his acrophobia. Whatever happens, he'll see something of the outside world. Are you quite comfortable? Snug as a bug, man. Harper, give me a hand. Can you breathe? Yeah, crazy. 36 beautifully concealed air holes. Perhaps you'd better get changed. be something down there that'll give us a lead, Jeff. Not so much as a torn button. Do you think Harry's in any sort of danger? Well, Mandrick's got the ransom note for 5,000 pounds. That's not very much, is it? Well, they're not playing for high stakes, so they won't play it rough. He'll be all right. Come on. Crazy, man. Perhaps you should call the police in now, Jeff. You're not backing out again, are you, Marty? No, but I'm very busy at the moment. Time's the kickoff. Three o'clock. Come on, we'll get the car. Well, I can hardly hoot a hearse, can I? Not a full one, anyway. Jeff. Right. The cemetery's back there. So? So why is he driving away from the cemetery? Perhaps he's going to pick someone up. No, but why is it covered with flowers and wreaths? I don't know. You're the expert. 
Come on, Jeff. Let's get past him. Let's see who's driving it. Why don't you let him pass? Let him wait. No respect for the dead. What is it? It's Randall. You were right, Marty. It must be Harper and Dighton. You seem to have the speed. What's going on, man? What's going on? You're not going, are you? Well, there's not much I can do here, is there, Jeff? And it is five to three. Ten to. And... Marty. Thank you very much, Farmer Giles. And wie diese beiden Mannschaften den Spielplatz vor dieses wichtige Entscheidungsspiel betreten? What's the score? What's the score? Können wir es uns bequem machen hey? und die Augen weiter genießen, die dieses Spiel uns sicher anbieten wird? It's a lovely day, Fred. from Germany, the second leg of that incredibly close fought International Cup. And about time too. Where have you been? The teams are already... Well, when you run out of leads, start again at the beginning. Hmm. He didn't put up much of a fight, did he? Harry? You're joking. Jeannie, look at those marks. Yes, so what? I don't understand. Don't you? Well, look. The work on this wall is done from the inside. By Harry? Who else? He was in it with them. To squeeze his dad out of five grand. <sighs> Why didn't he just ask for the money? Well, he had plans, man. It would have been a waste of time, Dick. So, Harry was part of it, eh? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought he'd had it in him. Must be the entrepreneurial blood in his veins. <laughs> you don't seem very worried. No, Mr. Randall, I'm not. But surely after what's happened, you can't possibly be happy about leaving all of this to Harry? I don't intend to, my dear. <laughs> you mean you've given up any idea of refounding the Mandrake family fortunes? Not at all. I have a little news for you. Martha! Darling! It will be a very short engagement. Martha's ambition is to fill the house with children. And I intend to give her every assistance. Hard luck, Harry. Not a word about it. That means they haven't told the police. I suppose that's a good sign. But we can't live forever in a parked house. What's this? What, they've told the police? Worse. Worse? Mandrake Watson. The engagement is announced of George Henry Mandrake to Martha Watson. The marriage will take place without delay. You never reckoned with Martha! My guess is that Harry's day is very nearly done. 
such an obvious move. I wonder I didn't think of it sooner. <laughs> Pity you went around to see the end of it. Oh, sorry, Jeff. I was busy. Oh, yeah. It was a very hard match, you know. We only won by the odd goal. And they wouldn't have done it if you hadn't have been there. Right. Marty. Hey. Do you know that bit where the German centre forward had beaten the whole English defence? It was an open goal, and he shot and it went over the top. Yeah. You didn't. <sighs> I did. You're as irresponsible as Harry. Harry? Harry Mandrake. Oh. Did they ever hear from him, Jeff? No. But they will. I don't think so, you know. I think he's frightened. He's probably holding a steady job down somewhere. What? <laughs> He'd sooner be buried alive. Free. Free at last, man. And with wages. <laughs> <laughs>